Nightly greetings one and all. Monique Tuzon here, homegrown and happy to bring you major events unfolding here at home and abroad and tops in tonight's late breakers. In Beijing, seeking it to up its image and expand its newfound role as peacemaker amid its contentious moves in the South China Sea and even more aggressive actions in the Taiwan Strait. In a statement, China's foreign ministry spokesperson offered China's intercession to mediate between Pakistan and Iran in the wake of the latest tit-for-tat exchange of airstrikes that began Wednesday when Iran hit Syria, Iraq and Pakistan with preemptive drone hits on allegedly anti-Iran militant or terrorist groups, which Pakistan expectedly responded to earlier today with jet fighter missile hits that killed seven civilians in border regions of the two countries. For its part, the U.S. State Department condemned the three sets of Iranian strikes on Wednesday, stressing how Tehran had violated the sovereign borders of those three countries. Oddly enough, hours before the strike, Pakistan's caretaker, Prime Minister Anwal ul haq Cocker, met and posed for photos with Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdul Lahian on the sidelines of the WEF summit in Davos, Switzerland. Former and 45th President of the United States, Donald J. Trump, whose walk in the park win in the Iowa caucus earlier this week cements him as the prohibitive favorite to win the Republican nomination for the 2024 presidential polls in November, is not taking the GOP primaries in the Granite State as a cakewalk. Recent polls show rival Nikki Haley, former South Carolina governor who served as Trump's U.N. ambassador, has cut down his lead to single digits and could pull off a surprise even more with the endorsement of New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu on her side. Still, supporters of the former president are brimming with confidence as they waited out in the cold and snow in Atkinson, where Trump is holding a campaign rally. One of his rabid and staunch supporters, who drove all the way from Vermont on an 11-hour trip, urged to cancel Tuesday's primaries and declare Trump the Republican presidential standard bearer. The United States is fed up with weeks of attacks on international cargo ships in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden by Yemen's Iranian-backed Houthi insurgents sympathetic to the Palestinian cause in Gaza City. Hence, after a series of retaliatory tit-for-tat hits against Houthi-held locations in Yemen, the United States government has officially declared the Houthis as bad guys and no-good terrorists. However, the State Department also stressed the tag or label could be formally stripped if the Houthis seize their attacks completely, as VOA's Pentagon correspondent Carla Babb reports. The U.S. on Wednesday called Houthi militants a terror group after about 30 attacks on international shipping lanes since mid-November. If the Houthis cease the attacks, we can certainly reconsider this designation. If not, the United States and Britain could launch more attacks against Houthi radar sites, launch sites and drone and missile facilities inside Yemen. The Houthis need to ask themselves how much of their capability do they want degraded uh, and disrupted uh, in light of these illegal, reckless and dangerous attacks. It is exceptionally long overdue and it's, it's still not even a complete restoration. Critics of the administration, like FDD's Behnem Ben Talablu, say more needs to be done against the Houthis, who serve as proxies for their military supplier, Iran. This is a neo-colonial project the Islamic Republic is engaging in to establish proxies and footholds across the Arab heartland of the Middle East to be able to have them fight the ideo ideological adversary of the Islamic Republic, which is the Jewish state in the Middle East. Iran supplies illicit weapons to violent proxies across the Middle East in Gaza, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq and Yemen. This month, U.S. forces boarded this small boat off the coast of Somalia and confiscated several advanced conventional weapons bound for Yemen and made by Iran. Iran denies supplying the Houthis with missiles, despite repeated evidence to the contrary. Iran has this proxy strategy which aims to put distance between it and threats and to create deniability. But with this newfound missile power, the regime is actually quite content in showcasing this itself. Tehran carried out deadly missile strikes inside Iraq and Pakistan this week, angering its neighbors. Islamabad recalled its Iranian ambassador 
as Iraqis in the northern Kurdish region launched massive protest. Carla Bab, VOA News, the Pentagon. At this juncture, let's turn to our colleague in PTV's Pine City Studios for the latest development in the Cordilleras. Naimbaga na bi Pilipinas, upat ang gakat para iti proteksyon na iti manalon ken panakapasaya ti sistema ti agrikultura, timpila ni Benguet Representative Eric Goya iti kamara. Iti House Bill No. 319, tarigagay ni Congressman Yap ang may pangato iti multa iti large-scale agricultural smuggling. Timot House Bill No. 316, wino ti Marketing and Utilization of Local Agricultural Produce sa AAC, Maguyugoy na giti government institution can food establishment at direkta gumatang itinatang ka na giti manalon. Babon mo iti House Bill No. 3382, may mandato iti nasyonal ken lokal na gobyerno, iti direkta panaggatang tinatang ka na giti man manalon para iti relief ken feeding programs. Kaya iti House Bill No. 315, wino iti free index based agricultural insurance, Mangipaa iti automatic insurance payout para ka iti nadadaan lang muna gapo iti extreme weather conditions. Kasi lagi na lang farmers natin na dedehado pagdating sa smuggling. Unang-una, dehado sila dyan. Pagdating naman sa katulad yung mga restaurant, di ba? Imbis na kumuha sila sa mga farmers na malalapit, eh, sa malayo pa sila kumukuha. So dahil may mga suki-suki o ganun, so nasusupport pa nila yung ibang lugar. Kapayatan na parikot iti siyudad ti Baguio kay Lian ti Panagado dag iti pribado kan iligala bubon a rason iti panagbaba ti supply ti Danom. Iti datos ti City Environments and Parks Management Office 215 lang dag iti deep well nga daan iti valid permit ti operata iti siyudad ti Baguio. Ti parikot na sorok sa nga ribo a deep well ti awanan iti valid permit as of August 2023. Dahil ito'y tirason, iti panagbaba iti libel, iti underground na uh, aquifers, o yung aquifers nga agris resulta man iti masansan a panagkurang tidanom. Tap na madaan iti umdas sa supply tidanom, iti siyad, iti ba iti manamnamang epekto ti El Nino fenomenon, mabukbukal ti lokal o gobyerno ti barong nga estratehiya. Baban iti mabukal nga estratehiya, malapdan ti panagadodag iti illegal deep well, Nakaro nga extraction ti groundwater kaya maprotektaran ti water resources. Talaga significant yung pagbaba ng ating uh, uh, water dito. Maapektuhan din yung ating water table, yung groundwater supply natin. So ito nga, uh, pinag-usapan namin yung uh, last year, inibitan natin yung uh, national uh, NWRB rito para pag-usapan namin yung mga illegal na mga mga kwan dito, mga deep well operations, ay napakarami. Bueno, nagkita na hindi namdawag manipulit ni PTV Kodalyera, siya ni Eddie Carta, na imbag Arabii. Thank you, Eddie Carta. And that's a wrap for tonight. We hope you could join us again tomorrow night, same place on your remote and browser, and same time for more breaking news. This is Monique Tuzon here, wishing you a restful evening. Thank you.